Hi everyone, this is Natasha. I wanted to share with you um, the cards that I've made that I showed in a previous video. Um, the Spellbinders Delights, and I'll cool in include a link right here uh, for those of you who want to see how I've cut these because I'm not going to show them in this particular video. So this is the card I'm going to show you, and I'm already far along on the second one, but it's a gatefold card. Unfortunately, it's a sympathy card. But I thought that, you know, there's really no reason why a sympathy card can't be pretty. Um, if anything, maybe this will just bring a little bit of a smile to the person's, the recipient's face. So, ooh, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you, I'm going to walk you through how I created the card. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a blank to show you. So I started off with a white... Staples uh, cardstock. So it's an eight and a half by eleven. I cut it the long side in the center, and then I did this gatefold. And for those of you who make a lot of cards or want to make a lot of cards, I cannot say enough good things about the Score Buddy because um, they tote it as a card maker's dream tool, and it actually is extremely handy. I love the size of it. First of all, it comes with a little pouch so it doesn't get dirty or glitter covered, which often are um, side effects of oh, sorry, having it on my desk. It has a lot of um, already built-in cool things. So here's the little scoring tool which pops into its own little housing so you never misplace it. But it has a couple of really cool um, markers already on the um, inch top ruler, which uh, shows you the four and a quarter, which is the half fold for a standard A2 size card. And this little marker, the two, is it two and an eighth? That's the gatefold card. So I just took the half, um, the standard A2 size half a eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. I lined it up here and I scored it at two and an eighth, uh, flipped it, scored it again two and an eighth, and then folded it in. And that's what it that's how I got this gatefold card. Just like that. So there's the score lines. See right there? And I flipped it over. Score line, folded it. Uh, burnish the edges with this um, tool <clears throat> and I was all good to go. Then I layered my favorite black cardstock. Um, see if, if I can give you the dimensions quickly. I'll have a full list of... Excuse me, I just drank some seltzer and it's trying to reappear. Um, I'll have all the dimensions along with the full product list on my blog, which I'll include a link in the description below, along with, the close -up, with some close-up photographs, because sometimes it's hard to see all the detail in the video. So the gatefold flaps are two and an eighth by uh, five and a half. The black layer is one and seven eighths by, I think, five and a quarter. Then there's a pink paper layer and it is just, um, oh I think it is cardstock actually, one and uh, three quarters by five. And then the pattern paper is one and, oh my dork, one and a quarter, one, just shy of one and a half by four and three quarters. Now the pattern paper that I used is um, this Prima Rondell collection. I think Prima papers sometimes get a little undervalued. I know that the Marion Smith uh, paper stack, um, uh, romance it's a romance novel, flew off a lot of shelves, um, but there are a lot of other um, Prima collections that are really quite lovely, and the benefit to the 6x6 stacks for card makers, it's a really nice scale, plus you get three of each sheet, and unlike 
most uh, six by six stacks only have two of each sheet, which makes it really nice. Um, I always feel like I'm getting more for my money. Plus these paper stacks are um, typically a little less expensive than like, let's say basic gray or um, Kaiser Craft, you know, some of those more expensive, um, even six by six. I think I got this at Uzak.com and I think it was $4.10. So well worth the money and it's a stack that has some very pretty papers but the paper that I used is this particular one. And one 6x6 six six stack was enough for me to make two cards, two uh, A2 size cards. And then I have I had a couple of uh, small pieces that were remnants um, and I punched out little butterflies with this Fiskars punch, which came from one of my fabulous subscribers. Thank you. And because I don't want to say the wrong name, I'll put it up here. <laughs> For the life of me, it just popped out of my head. So I have one last one to put together. So I have the, the way this gatefold is, I have the um, upper image, the top image, only adhered on one side on an eighth inch foam dimensional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my, I'm going to put this aside for a second. I'm going to grab my purple ATG. Let me just move. You know I work in a small space so I have to move things around. So I want the texture side up and then I have this pink layer. Oh look at that, dimensionals jumping. So I have the pink layer cut to three inch square and the black layer is three and a quarter inch. I'm going to use the half inch tape because you um, need to use less and less is economical. So let's see if I can do this over the camera. And I'll go right here. And then the other question that I received was regarding how to attach this really delicate image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Zig Two Way, and I have a um, pair of tweezers on hand, which will help me position it. And remember, I'm also working from behind the camera. It's on a tripod in between my knees. So, see, you just I just knocked it. So all I'm going to do is add, and this comes out pretty quickly because this is a pretty fresh one. So I'm going to add it to all of the solid pieces and I'm going to leave the little stems without glue. I found that that works the best. So I'll make sure I don't have too much glue on and then I'm going to grab my tweezers line this up. And now I know I have glue just on the flowers, so I'm going to press down right where the glue is so you don't get that extruded extra glue issue. See? Really quick, really easy, because this is a quick dry. So I have that all set, and now all I'm going to do is line up. So I need to add dimensional on this side, so I'm going to flip it. I know it's right here. Grab my, and this is from my local junk store. So I'm going to line this up. that off and then the only other thing that I have left to do is add the little butterflies and I'll add them with the same glue. So I want to make sure that since I've already stamped the sentiment on the inside and the sentiment is from Stamps of Life by Stephanie Bernard called Branches for Flowers and it's just a really simple with sympathy. So let's see if I can again line this up from behind the camera. Oh, maybe I should just look at the viewfinder. Mm, there we go. So 
so now it just opens up this way. And now I just have my little three butterflies. I'm just gonna bend them in the middle and add the glue. And again, I'll have my tweezers. Because it's usually the easiest way to add. Just have some glue on the end of my tweezers. I'm just gonna press down to make sure it makes good contact. We had a snowfall um, day before yesterday, and I don't know if you can hear it, but it's melting, and I can hear it um, drip outside my office window. So I'm gonna use my nail. Make sure it's set up before I proceed. And then one last one. I prefer using this um, Zig 2A on smaller items plus items that have. I don't see that one popped up. Because if you use a liquid glue, you're likely to have too much and it would extrude out and I do not like that at all. I just end up having to do a lot of cleanup. Okay, there you go. So that's the second card and they're going in the mail today. And again, I'll include a link in the description below and the only other thing that I did is I stamped my uh, personalized stamp on the back. So I'll, send, I'll include a link in the description below so you can see um, all the products that I used, a full listing, and whenever possible, when I list the uh, recipe for the cards, I usually try to include links if I have them available. For example, if I know where something is still available for sale, like the, I know this paper stack is still available from Uzak for $4.10, so I'll include a link to that. The score buddy I picked up from um, Blitzy on one of those specials. And there you go. There's my cue to wrap it up. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching.